I can't believe she's better. This is one of the things that one of the moms recently shared with me. We'll say her name is Julie. We'll say she's 12. We're changing all of this to protect the child's identity. But to give you the backdrop, to give you an understanding of the significance of she is better, you really need to understand where Julie was three years ago. Julie was a child that was completely losing it, totally unable to regulate herself. The school that she was in, this very nice private school, was basically like, you know, Julie is probably not the right kid for us. Uh, you may find her in another school. Yeah, we think she needs medications. She's probably got ADHD. It looks like she's got some anxiety disorder. And the mom actually talked to a very well-known psychiatrist in Los Angeles. And the psychiatrist is like, yeah, she, she's got an anxiety disorder. Here's a medication. And the medication had some pretty significant side effects. And I have nothing against medications. If medications help someone, as I've said before, it is fantastic. And any family that asks me, should I put my kid on a medication? I'm like, if it's going to help your kid, go for it. But the whole reason for Julie's story is the fact that as a society, as a medical community, we are so quick to be like, oh, this kid has ADHD. This kid has an anxiety disorder. This kid has ODD, oppositional defiant disorder. Like, like we even know what that means other than the fact that this kid is acting out in some kind of strange way that we can't make sense of. To give you an understanding of how bad things were for this poor family, and this mom to me is a hero. She is a hero and she's actually one of the people who helped open up my eyes to mold along with a host of other things. Because three years ago, I was clueless. And she is this champion that basically is like, I'm going to figure out what's going on with my kid. Do you want to figure it out with me? I'm like, sure, why not? So to give you a backdrop of Julie, three years ago, this child was getting into fights, completely unable to regulate herself in the school, like having massive meltdowns. I mean, it was more than meltdowns. Like she was aggressive. She was reactive. At one point, she almost punched another kid. Like it was a big mess. When Julie got really bad, at one point, she grabbed the knife and was chasing after her mom in their kitchen, yielding a knife, basically trying to attack her. And the mom called me in tears. She's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Do I put my kid in a hospital? Because I don't know what to do. And the challenges that this poor family have gone through, and I know there are so many kids just like Julie, because this isn't just a Julie story. There, there are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of kids in this country who are Julie's. We prescribe antipsychotics, antipsychotics to six to 10 year olds, 280,000 kids per year are put on these medications. We dispense antidepressants and anxiolytics to kids like it's water. And again, I don't have any problem with these medications because if they keep the kids safe, if they help the kids, if they help their families, great. What I do have a problem with is the fact that we don't even think for a split second, why is a kid falling apart like this? We don't, it's not even in our consciousness. We don't even ever step back to say, why is a child suffering like this? Why is a child falling apart like this? And that's the whole point of the story. That's the whole point of all these discussions, really. You see, fast forward, what we came to learn about Julie with the help of one of my dear friends, Dr. Scott Antoine, who's, who's this amazing doc in Indiana that's helping kids like her, was that this poor kid had contracted Lyme disease and a really nasty case of it. And we happened to find it through some testing that I did. And that's when I said, you know what? I'm not the Lyme guy. I know someone who is. We also found a massive, not a tiny bit, a massive amount of mold in their home to the point where the, when the mom found this mold when their inspector came and started like opening things up and testing she's like we're getting the hell out of here literally they just left the house left their furniture moved into an apartment because it was that bad now had we not identified the lime had we not identified the mold and julie had continued to live in that home what would have happened 
What would have happened to Julie? How disabled would Julie have become? Not just as a child, but as the adult. And how many poor people, how many poor kids are essentially becoming disabled because we don't even think about asking the question. It's not that we're, we're asking the question. We're not even getting to a place where we're even asking the questions. And how much suffering is this causing for our society? For these poor families where they, they look and they're like, I don't know what's going on with my kid, but this is not my kid. And that, that is the thing. This is not who these kids are. These kids are not the angry, dysregulated kids who are falling apart. That is the dysfunction in their body. That is the disease, the physical disease that's causing this thing to fall apart. Because the mind is highly sensitive, highly vulnerable to any kind of toxicity, to any kind of inflammation, to any kind of real dysregulation in the rest of the system, in the rest of the body. And when the body starts falling apart, this thing starts falling apart, except for these kids, you can't really see the lime, right? Lime is not this thing where all of a sudden you grow out an extra arm, right? Mold toxicity is not something where you get like a little rash on your head that says mold, right? You can't see these things. It's not like a broken leg where you're like, oh, your leg is broken. And that's the problem. There are so many of these things and lime and mold happen to be two of many things that we cannot see. And we cannot see them more so because we don't even think of looking for them. When was the last time a psychiatrist said, you know what, I'm going to check for Lyme disease just, just to see. You know what, why, why, don't we, why, don't we, why don't we have someone come and check your home for mold? We don't even have these discussions. Now, the beautiful part of Julie was... Just recently, when I was talking to them all, and they've gone through a lot of work. I mean, this mom has done so much work. I don't, I don't know if I'd even be able to do that. I'm sure as a parent, if my kid was falling apart, I'd find the strength to do that. But she changed her diet. Like I said, they work with my colleague who is this brilliant guy, and he treated the Lyme, and he helped start the detox. And then I brought on other binders to really suck those mold toxins and clear that out. And with this last discussion that we had, the mom says, I can't believe she is so much better. Julie was in a ski resort. And for the first time, the mom just walked away. And Julie was interacting with the ski instructors and telling them how grateful she was. And she's not on any medications at all. She's on a bunch of supplements to keep her system regulated at an immunological level. We're not doing any kind of psychiatric supplements or medications. A whole lot of inflammatory, a whole lot of detox, a whole lot of gut balancing. The mom has noticed this girl to be more loving and appreciative. And really the best side of Julie is coming out. The true side of Julie is coming out. And that, that's what I love about this work. I mean, that's the whole reason why I'm here, why I keep sharing these stories with you guys. Because what is so cool about the work that I do is we take the child who is in a state of chaos. And it's, it's like there's just physiological chaos in their system. And there are all of these drapes, if you want to say, these covers that distort the child's true self and as we pull these layers away this beautiful human being starts shining through the real human being the real child and ultimately we get to see this loving kind generous self start showing up because that's that's what we're all about especially kids i mean as, as adults we've got our own psychological issues and we've got our baggage and it ultimately causes us to feel hurt and Kids are pure. That's, that's why I love working with them. Why, why I don't work with adults is we've got too much baggage. I've got too much baggage. Kids don't have that. They're pure. And when you clean up the inside, when you balance the physiology, that pure essence of the child starts shining through. And the kid who is about to stab her mom with a knife, the kid who is about to punch kids in the school, the kid who is getting kicked out of the school, 
is not this loving human being who is compassionate and kind and regulated and happy. And I hope through these conversations, we can create this possibility for all the kids out there. And even if we don't create the possibility, at least we allow parents to know that these possibilities exist. And we start driving forward the conversation so all providers, even if they're pre prescribing medications, and again, I have nothing against medications. I have family members who are on medications and it's helping them profoundly. Medications are great. I just hope we can stand back and also say, is there something else? Is there something else that is causing all of these things that I'm seeing? And how can we go about understanding these things and then ultimately taking care of them? I'm so thankful that you're a part of this community. I'm so thankful that you're taking the time to watch these videos. And I hope you can share these with others so that we can continue to raise the awareness of our community and help more kids gain access to this information, help more families gain access to this information, hopefully transform the lives of kids, not just now, but for the rest of their lives. And that's the really, really cool part of this. When I think back and I think forward and I look to see how many kids can we literally change the course of their future by helping them become healthy now. How many disabled adults can we prevent? How many adults who are falling apart can we prevent by helping them as children now. And that's really the power of this conversation and why I'm here sharing all of this. So I thank you for watching. I thank you for being a part of this community and please share these videos with others. Be well. This is Dr. K. Bye-bye.